Earlier this week, I got out fishing for a couple of hours on a local still water on a very pleasant day for mid-December. The sun was shining, there was a gentle breeze blowing down the pond, a nice southwesterly. It was 12 degrees C, which is incredible for the time of year. And there's two choices on this pond. Basically, you can fish on the, the north bank or the south bank. In the winter, when the sun is very low, even at midday, the south bank is totally in shade. There's a high bank up behind you, lots of trees. And it can be a bit cold, even on a, a mild day, you get no sun whatsoever. On the north bank, you've got the sun pretty much in your eyes at midday. And I started fishing about 11 o'clock. And when I actually got onto the bank just before then, the sun was pretty much straight into my eyes. But I knew by the time I tackled up, got all sorted out it would start as the earth moves round, the sun doesn't do anything. As the earth moves round, the sun's going to appear to be going round to my right. And so I will end up with some water where I can see the float. But with the ripple on one thing and another, actually seeing the float for the whole session was variable. Bits of cloud did build up as the uh, session wore on and later on it clouded up completely after I'd stopped fishing because there was some rain on the way. This sort of checkerboard effect on the water has been known about by anglers for many many years. I think any angler who's float fished on rivers and, and still waters will know that there are times when because of the sun and the light, it can be incredibly difficult to see the float. There's no one single solution that will be infallible. When there's thick cloud and that water appears white, one of, one of the solutions is to use a black tip float like this one. And that, that can work very well. This is just a, an ordinary peacock quill with a thinner piece of peacock in the tip. It's about three millimeters there and about four and a bit, the main main part of it, three treble A waggler. There are times in, in better conditions when an ordinary red insert, again, it's a, a piece of three millimeter peacock in the tip and just solid peacock there and that in, in good conditions, that's ideal and, and a good river float, bigger versions of this. A type of float I've been using a lot on still waters are these, they're peacocks and then they've got, a, this one's got a three millimeter hollow pole float tip. What I've done is cut the top off and then made a little scoop halfway down the tip and reinforced it with a, another piece of tube or a little bit of uh, araldite on there, araldited it in, in there. And because they're hollow, they're translucent. So the sun really picks up these float tips and they, and th this is the float I actually used in this session. And most of the time it wasn't bad, but when that sun went in, it was almost as if the black one might have been better. What I've discovered since is that I'm always making floats. I've made some with a much thicker tip. I think these are about a four and a half millimeter tip. So it's hollow. It's got a hole in the side. The water will flow in and out. They're incredibly sensitive, these floats. The one I've been using there, you can see movements pretty much of the hook bait. The hook and the hook bait is enough to affect this a little bit. If they pick up the number 10 shot, it's easy to spot. Certainly easier than it would be on a, a standard peacock tip float. 
And don't tell me about the buoyancy of the tip. It's how much volume it is. So there's very little volume with these hollow tips. Any solid tip, it doesn't matter. It's cane. You make it out of lead if you want. Its density doesn't matter. Its volume does. So maybe this float is the answer I'm looking for. Very, very visible, but very, very sensitive. Years ago, Tom Pickering, who was world champion at one time, very, very good match angler, reckoned on the Trent, a big, wide, open water, that a yellow tip float was the answer when it was that checkerboard, that black and white, to try and spot it. But even he said there are times when even this won't beat it. The, the standard on the Trent, because the water was often a white looking, was the black tip. Now this whole thing has got me thinking. Uh, maybe what I need to do is to make some more floats like this, but with some black, bigger black tubing. I have got some in three, maybe four millimeters. I need to have a look, see what I can find. See if I can make some with a about a four and a half millimeter black tip, but hollow with the hole in, nice and sensitive, nice and easy to see. And perhaps that will be the answer. The session was fairly slow going. The, the fish were willing to bite. It was only fishing a 22, a couple of number eights, a couple of tens down the line. I seemed to have problems with the hooks. I, I had about three or four that, that and they were different patterns. They seemed to go blunt after about five fish. And uh, the moment you find that your maggot won't hook on easily, if it's, you start to think the hook's blunt because it's not hooking into the maggot, then it's time to change the hook every pretty much every time. Quite why I was going through so many, I don't know. There, there were Camasan, I think it was an old Mustad 90340. All a little bit strange, but that's the way of the world, I, I'm afraid. I did get some roach up to about 12 ounces, uh, one perch, lost a perch in the weed. There's a bit of old decaying weed down off to my left and he stuck his nose in there and left me hooked to the weed. One little skimmer, uh, two or three little roach bream hybrids just for variety. There's quite a few small hybrids in there at the moment, sort of an ounce or two, not very big. I hope I've got you thinking about float colours and visibility. It was nice in that sun. I did, I did get a bit of a tan, which makes it a bit unusual for uh, December, unless you go to somewhere a lot further south. Certainly far better than a, a cold, wet day. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.